I want to apologize. It ran out of uh, memory on on this uh, tablet here. I'm recording. My phone ran out of batteries, and YouTube is getting rid of the the webcam, which was the best quality videos that I produced, because um, all my other machines have just uh, been disappearing. Um, so I want to apologize also for the the quality of this video. Uh, and also that the last video got cut off. I was ending off a message, and it really this idea lends itself to be on its own. So it's really Minishamayim that this is a separate video. It's it's really divine providence, and it's something I've mentioned before in other videos. Was it, it was worth repeating in the Psalms. We have twice King David, the psalmist, says. Lenegdi summit. I said before me always. In Psalm 16, it says, "Vishvisi Hashem lenegdi summit." I set the Lord before me always. In Psalm 51, it says, "Vichatasi lenegdi summit." It says, "My sin is before me always." And really, I would venture to say that both are really one because. Why did God give us a world where we have the capacity for sin? Why didn't God just create us as robots, as angels? I mean, that's what the angels, the angels, according to most opinions, although it's not universally accepted, but they they lack the capacity for sin. I mean, when it I mean the term sin, really, chet, particularly which which King David used there, chatosi, my chet, chet means like missing the mark, you know, if someone is uh, in archery and they miss their bullseye, that that's called the chet in the, in the Bible. Well, you know, we we have that um, elsewhere in Scripture, you know that that imagery. And the term is chet, the term, and or or chet could also mean a blemish, but we use the term for sin. And it says the gamma the kedosh of yosim tohola that even in his holy ones, even the angels, there is tohola, which would seem to mean imperfection. And so the angels are not perfect in the sense how God is perfect, but when compared to us, their level of imperfection is much less. But even the angels are not perfect. And, and you know, that lends itself you know, to the whole concept, although it's controversial, the fallen angels and so forth. Uh, whether that's literal or figurative. It's not for now, but the point is, you know, why did God give us a capacity for imperfection? Not only capacity, but almost a guarantee. I mean, it says in Scripture, you know, the chatz v'fesach that sin crouches at the door. That God said to 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 Cain, to Cain, and it says, you know, he he tells Cain, you will sin. It's almost a guarantee. So, why? Why did God create this capacity? And I think the answer can be found in that, for lack of a better term, what we call a gezerah shava, the the law of comparison that we have, <clears throat> that we can cut a comparison between these two biblical verses when the same terms are used together that there's some there's a lesson a common lesson that can be shared and so this concept the khatosi lenegdi samid my sin is before me always with shivisi hashem lenegdi samid i said the lord before me always the meaning behind that is like our sages say that when it comes to a Balgaiva, when it comes to a, an arrogant person, 
Duchta Achis. It says, you know, there ain't enough room in this town for the both of us, so to speak. God says that when, when you know, when we reflect upon the arrogant, and so God created us with the capacity and almost the guarantee for sin in order that we should be able to gain humility and thereby make space for God in our life. Because if we are arrogant, then we are prone to self-aggrandizement and even self-worship. And if we become humble, and we recognize that we have, we have a standard to live up to, which we don't always live up to, by virtue of looking at that standard and comparing ourselves to us, that humbles us, and yet God still loves us, and that opens up the possibility for us to have a relationship with God because of humility. And so too, referring back to our previous video, humility in our interpersonal relationships. Not always having to say, I'm right. A recognition that maybe we don't have the whole picture and or even when we do even when we are right about in, in a particular argument or issue a recognition that we're not a hundred percent right or that there or even we are let's say close to a hundred percent right in the in a particular issue still what can we learn from the other side can we have compassion? Can we have understanding? Or can we learn about ourselves and our own views more, more jacket. by virtue of that? That's something that's worthwhile for all of us. Because then we come to more self-awareness, more self-knowledge, more learning. And in that merit... Of humility we're worthy to the grace of God that when it says in the Psalms the a broken contrite spirit are the sacrifice of God the term Elohim means strict justice and that everywhere else when we talk about the sacrifices it says Hashem which is name the Lord which is the name of mercy that God has to extend his mercy to accept an animal sacrifice but when it comes to humility and to contriteness that God can accept in a strict sense and through that we gain his grace through that humility not we don't need any type of blood sacrifice because we sacrificed ourselves. And that is how we can gain really God's grace through that humility, through recognizing that we're not perfect and therefore we set God before us and then we can develop that relationship with God. All right, if, if you like our videos, please um, like and comment if you have anything you want to have another video about and please subscribe to our videos. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.